G'day, how you going? Ian Applos here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to do a lesson. I've been asked by a few people, show us how to paint some rocks. So I'm going to show you my understanding and the science behind painting certain rocks within a painting. And I've got a couple of canvases here and I'm going to draw some diagrams just showing you the different visuals and the perspective of rocks ones that are close and further apart. So get on over here and we'll get right into this little handy and healthy tutorial. Now I'm gonna do a few layouts here. Now this is, let's pretend this is the water, okay? There's the land and you're standing here. Your eyesight is pretty much gonna go right out to the horizon line, okay? And up here, I will do a diagram as well. So we've got the side view and the side view and the back view. So let's say this is the shore here and that's the horizon line, whether it's a lake, river, ocean, what? Now, let's say you've got a rock here and the rocks in any painting, some are close to the shore, some are further away, okay? Let's go maybe one here. This is just a simple diagram, one here and obviously the last one there. Now. You, when you're on the shore, you can look down at this rock. So you're looking down there. And then this one here, you're looking there, so on, and so on. And then right out to the horizon line. If there's a rock way, way out here somewhere, let's say if it's an island or a rock, it's going to look Let's say like that, okay? I'm gonna paint some into this subject as well. So that's flat. Now, as you're getting closer to you, you can start seeing the top of the rock. The further you get away, it turns into the side of the rock until it's like this. So let's say you have a rock out here somewhere. It's way, way out there like this and like this and maybe halfway here the bottom of it is flat because you can only see the side of it, the side of it, you got me? And as you're coming a bit close about here, you can, instead of putting a flat base, you could start bringing the base around with some dimension because you're starting to look on top of the rock, okay? And then right in front of you, let's say there's one here, a rock here, that can virtually be around like that, okay? Because you can see, right on top of the rocks. But as they get further out, they're gonna go like that. The bases are gonna become flat. And the closer they come to you, the base, instead of it being just here, it becomes all the way around. So let's say that's the water. Now I'm gonna paint this in as well, just so you get more digestive of what I'm on about, okay? Now what I'll do, we might come back to that canvas later, but we'll get onto this. I'm just gonna paint a simple, water horizon line. So I'm just grabbing some craft white, just something I can prime that canvas up with. So let's get this. So I need to put at least a sky and some water, just so you can get the sense of this tutorial. This white paint's just gonna make the colors happen better. So what I'm going to do is grab the blue paint, which is just a cobalt blue, and I want to get some kind of sky. Now it's not going to be a detailed sky or anything like that. I'll get that down to roughly where I want our horizon line, okay? Now see how quick that went on because I put the craft paint there? Now you need to practice procedures like this in your art journey. You don't just watch someone paint and then try and paint it. You've got to learn the procedures within a painting. Okay, I haven't even cleaned the brush. I'll grab a little bit more blue, maybe, just so as I can make a bit of a, maybe a turquoisey green, I don't know, we'll see how we go. And the color on there is going to lighten it up as well. Okay, so we'll get this from the bottom. This is just our water. Get it to the horizon line. Now I'll just crisp in that horizon line there, make that a bit sharper. Let's just, so we've got some water and a sky, all right? Now just another 
while I'm on the subject. Our water here can be darker at the bottom and then fade in a bit lighter as it goes to the horizon line, okay? So we've got it lighter out there. And it'll be a bit darker at the base. That'll give the water a sense of going from you out into the distance. It'll give the water a sense of looking like that instead of like that. Because sometimes we can be trapped and caught painting flat curtains of rocks and clouds and trees like they're all being pressed. The base is darker. Okay, now, before we put the different rocks in, we can also put some little stones or pebbles, let's say at the beginning of a lake or something, okay? Always start with the darker color. Everyone's different. Use what brush is gonna work for you. I've just got a little round one here. And you can have black, gray, brown tone to your whatever rocks. I'm gonna go for a brown rock, but what I'd like to do is paint the darker color in first. You always need the darks to accent the lights. And let's just say we'll have a, use a round, and you wanna kind of just put them in wherever. You can have some little ones, everything's wet. I could have dried it, should have dried it, doesn't matter. I'm getting big rocks in front like this, or different rocks there. This is dark. Out there on their own, they can be, they can be little rocks, just tendering out there like that, okay? Just little things like that. And we'll do a few more stones. You can mix up a glaze and sink these under your water, but it can be mumble jumbly. Okay, you can see how they're looking. Whatever, a bigger one there, something there. When you put the highlights on, that's what's going to set things backwards and forwards from each other, okay? Now I've given the canvas a bit of a dry, so I'm just gonna, let's say, grab some white, not too much, and then that's your rock color. Bring a bit out. And you can do this in one, two, three values. Your actual base color, okay? Now, and then the color we're doing now, and then a highlight, okay? You'll understand that bit in a tick when I get to it. So now we're just lightly, gingerly giving this a bit of light, okay? And check your rocks if they're dark enough first because if they're not dark enough, they're not gonna cut the mustard. Now, we're just going to gingerly put some of this on the tops of some of these. Now, I'm feeling it's not bright enough, so down on the palette, I'm just adding a little bit more lighter white to it, and just get to the very top. Scratch it in, scratch it in, scratch it in. They don't have to be done really super fast. And now this rock here, that's at the back. See this one? It doesn't look like it, but that one's gonna come in front of it now, setting that one back. So you work from the back. This one here can come there, and then this one will pull in front. That one's at the back. So I'll quickly do this. This one's gonna set it back. Don't leave a dark edge on them. They look wrong like that. That one can come right in front, right in front. A little bit there, right in front. Okay, now we're gonna go for a highlighted color. So pick up some more white. Now you never want pure white though. Leave some of that color there so you can see the difference. And we'll just highlight that now. Now the good thing is you can always dry your acrylic paints before you're adding the next coat. And these are gonna be a lot less. You can probably even use a smaller brush. Just watch this, this is simple. Highlighting just the tops, just the tops of those rocks. Putting that one back, mainly the front ones. Don't be too fussy about the ones in the background, but I'm just giving you an example. You're putting the appropriate rocks in front and behind each other, okay? And then from a distance, when people look at your painting with these sort of rocks, these can be on a footpath, underwater, whatever, okay? Now they look like some stones there. Now, if anything, the darks are a little bit shy. I'll add that in and you'll see what I mean. So we'll darken up our color. There it is there. We'll get a bit of black and we'll shadow that color. 
and you can even use this as the first coat. The more you get into the science of painting rocks and colours, the more you'll understand. So I just want to put the where I feel there's just the ground and whatnot in between all this. This should have been done first, but you'll get a gist of just what the darks do to your rocks all the way down here, down there, down in there. They're not going to look like they're floating or hovering within your painting. They look proper. I'll just get some of the darks back in there and then I'll scatter the highlights back. So there, I'll sink that one back again, push him back. Where else did I lose one? There, there, there. Now, if you had some of this colour left over, which is here, it's dry now, you mix that with a glaze, just a little bit of glaze. When that's dry, you can paint over it. You'd want a bit more shadow here though of this colour darker, and it'll sink them underwater. So just so you get a gist, all those stones that I've painted now, you got them right here at the beginning of the water's edge. Okay, you can see you can clearly see the tops of them. So they wouldn't be done like, like this. Because it's putting them on one angle and your water on another angle, it's just wrong. Now we'll do, let's say we'll do some distance rocks out in the painting first, so you'll get a gist of it. And then we'll do these closer ones. So I'll start with our darker color. Now the furthest away ones, remember they're gonna have a flat bottom and then a whoopity doo top. So I'm gonna start off with a flat brush and then I'll start incorporating the filbert to get the whoopity doo top bits in, okay? So we've got some black here and I'll probably mix up some of that brown. I'll just make a, a dark brown color there for these rocks in the lake, water, ocean slash painting. So we can use our arm, a bullshit stick. This is something quite huge out there, whatever it is, but it's way, way out there. So let's put this way, way out there. Boom, we'll put one there and maybe a smaller one here. Okay, that's the base. I can go back to me filbert brush now and I will, let's create the shape of this rock. It's, it's way out there, but it's a long way away. Get the top of it as reasonably sharp as you can. I might have to bring the flat brush in, because I've got no paint on my hands, and get the bottom. There we go. So you can pretty much paint upside down. Paint on a Lazy Susan would be the best way to do a painting. Their way out there. This is just something far out in the water, whatever it is. Give them a dry. Now we're going to highlight those. So see the water, how it's sort of coming out there. If you had, where are we? My hands aren't going to bend enough. Those rocks are out there. But if you have the water where you can see it and the rocks like that close up, they're going to look like they're laying flat on the water, if for those people know what I mean. So we've got that paint there. Let's just grab some simple white. I'm just using basic colors here. We're gonna get kind of like a, a gray color going now. Now these aren't like the stones on the foreshore there where you need a lot of depth. These are just gonna be lightly scratched in. I'm gonna use the filbert and a smaller filbert or a little something small that I can get in there with, like this one here. And you don't need too much paint on your brush. Watch this. I'll just take a bit of that off. Because I feel you don't need it a big heavy. Now this rock, you've just created any shape. I've just created any shape. And you can look at it and think, well, this bit here, let's get a bit of paint on there. I've rubbed it all off. Let's put that, go to the very top of that black mark. Don't leave a black ridge on the edge of it. It just looks wrong. Okay, now I'll scrumble, scratch, and I'll paint that in front of the black bit and give it some other bits like this out there. You just play with it. Put some of this right on the top, scratching down. Get rid of that dark edge. And then here, 
This is just a simple water within the rock, okay? Sorry, this is just a simple rock within the water. We could probably get something there in front as well. So it's a bit of a, it's got what some bits and pieces all over it. And then this other one, same value, we can just slightly scratch in some light hitting it, details far away. You can wipe the living buggery out of your brush if you want and even scrumble some of that if you can, but I've lost the, there we go. Okay, we've got our, grab some more white and we'll tint a bit of this up. Not too loud, just enough to notice the difference. And then we go less, less area on the rock we highlight. So we painted in the rock uh, 100%. We highlighted it with this, this, the second colour, let's say 70%. And this is only going to be highlighted on top of that now, probably 25% of the whole size of the rock. On the very top, the very top, dancing around, dance it around, dance it around. And let this be within that second colour you put on there. Highlighting it, okay? How's me focusing going? And it's just, you're setting back bits and pieces. You'll get more familiar with how all this sort of science and behavior works within a painting. That's it. So we've done about 25% of the rock. That's all you need to do. Now the same here. Find your bits you wanna highlight. I wanna bring that in front of there, boom make it more round, there we go. Same up here, leaving the darks where they are, right at the top there. And the more you do this, you'll be telling yourself, man, I could have done this years ago. Because with your practice and knowing what to do, you can do it, I'm telling you right now. I'm gonna put a bit right in front here. Now looking from here, you can sort of see, well, yeah, it's not, it's not bad. I've got a little bit of yellow into that paint. I'm just going to see as an example if some light was hitting there. You can really put some red light, yellow light, sunset, whatever. I'm just doing this as an example on this big rock. So it's like some, I don't know, some brighter lights hitting it. Okay, back to this side diagram. We've done this rock out here, which is this one and probably that one, okay? Now we're going to do this area here where we'll start to see more of the top okay and more of the base which will be here you'll be able to see that more okay i've got a different brown here now so i'm going to use this one this is the um, burnt sienna okay so we'll map in our rock this color and before i do that's the color of the rock back over here remember we got the sh the, the value so we'll put a little bit of dark in there just to create the depth of that rock. So this will be the 100% color of the rock. Now we're gonna start seeing more than just the side of it, okay? So we can put this one, we can start off flat. We'll make this one bigger because it's closer. And I'm gonna show you just how wrong it's gonna look when you leave it flat and then how right it would be when you bring it into perspective with your painting. It could have any old shape you want. Boom, we're gonna go something like that. It even could have went higher up than that one there. Now, we're gonna quickly block it in. Now, just remember, your rock can have any shape. If you're copying a reference picture and it has a certain rock in it, don't feel obligated to copy that rock line for line. You just use that as subject matter and put the rock the way you know how to paint it into your painting, okay? So now we've got that rock pretty much like it's further away than what it should be. But now we're gonna start bringing it into perspective, like I told you. See how the rock's flat, but the water's running this way? So now because it's that close, we can start to bring the roundness of the rock. Like that. And you will see the difference now, how that has an effect on the perspective of the painting. Now see here, 
that is wrong there. We've got to bring this pretty much to there. Okay, not a point and a tail like it was out there. Just getting that done. So this is the darker value of our rock. So this is the template of our rock. We can probably go to this color now, and then we're gonna to start to highlight it. You can even probably just highlight that color a bit more. So it's a bit of both, see? Because if that's too opaque, it's gonna make your painting look wrong as well. Okay, so now this rock is pretty much all the way around like that. I'm making it round. Just scatter this stuff in. This is the 75% color footprint of the rock now. Uh, that first color is just the depth, okay? I don't know what sort of rocks they are, but they're rocks all the way there. And it can scratch down into that darker color just like that. Boom, bitty, boom. I didn't think about that. I just got right into it. Now we'll give that a dry and we'll highlight that. So I'm just going to use simple white, bring some white over here and bring that in to it's the value I want. Now this is only 25% of the rock we're going to paint now. So let's get the light hitting the top. See these scratch marks? They're great. They can scratch down, scratch down from both sides. We'll get this scratching down there. Leave some dark bits. Now I want this coming. See how I umbrella shaped it there? That's what I'm going to do to this point here. Look for umbrellas in your rocks. I see one about here. So this, I'll start my brush on the tight edge where the paint can be solid. And now I want to make that umbrella shape. Look for that umbrella shape. There we go, boom. Bit of something over here, bit of something in front of that. Now we can just highlight that even less again. I hope my camera focus, I'm having tr teething problems getting the focusing mastered on this camera. Now this is probably, we had 100%, 75%, 25%, and if anything, you gotta put this on just like 5%. Get a little bit more brighter. Now. I feel my brush is quite loaded. Look at that. I don't want big, thick marks on the painting. So I pretty much wiped a lot of that paint off. Now it's airy and scratchy. Airy and scratchy help detail your umbrella shapes. Watch this. Pounce it on. I'll put a little bit too less on there. Little, 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 little. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. Something like that. Let me have a look in there. And you'll see just the subtleness there. Bit of light there, bit of light there. Because I could see here, I want light coming all the way from here and scratching down there. Boom. Now this umbrella shape, we want to bring scratchy. See how less of this colour I put on compared to the previous colour? That's what you've got to try and shoot. And then just bits there that light's hitting wherever. That's it. Let me have a look in there. I just want to bring maybe some of this down. There we go, all the way to the water's edge. And maybe a bit here. Okay. That's it. Now you can see how we're starting to see the top of this rock, because it's closer. And out there, they're further away. Okay, so on the painting underneath, we've pretty much done this rock, that rock, and in between this area here. We've done the stones. Now we're going to do this one right here, okay? So what colour do you want your rock to be? I don't know. We'll just, I'm going to just pick up the straight black, okay? This one's closer to us. So once again, I'll paint it like this, but it's going to be closer, and you'll see the difference why it's got to be shown the way I'm showing it in this video. So we, let's just say, because I've seen people do this with boats as well, anything that goes in the water. We're gonna make this a bigger one because it's very close. These are like, I suppose, you know, rivers and lakes and mountains and stuff, you get stuff like this. Now let's just say, we're gonna paint it like that, but obviously a bit bigger because it's closer. 
and I'm going to show you in this quick demo here you'll see how it's going to look wrong compared to that one over there you watch pick up your coffee have a mouthful of that coffee you got in your hand and all of a sudden sit back and go you know what guru I know what you mean okay now see that that's a far away rock but see with this the way we've got it and that one there sorry wrong finger we're given perspective of the water but when we go and put one like this that should be out there here our water's gone and looked door oh where am I what's happening okay so like we've done to here you're gonna bring that butt him and then pretty much come down wherever right around up there there we go now look at this difference I'll get that sharper there quickly we can see the top and the side of this not just the side because he's closer in vision like I showed you on that pencil demonstration how your eyesight is from the shoreline out to the horizon line what you can see it looks a bit funny but you'll see when we add the um, highlights this is the 100% color now we've got the 100% color there let's pull some of that over and then do a mid value so we'll get a bit of white you can probably use whether you want it to be a gray sort of rock or a brownie sort of rock I'm just using basic colors here for this demonstration and now we'll get most because I've brush mixed it I'll get most of this paint off this brush or I might even have to wash it but that'll be okay now like I did my umbrella I'm making this all from there but you virtually I like to do the um, the back bits first the top back bit so I might have a little bit just creep in there and then this one right in front like that boom this one coming right in front there okay that can stay black because this is this is all this edge don't feel because it's such a big rock to have so many lumps and bumps in it it can be a big smooth pebble type of boulder in the water I've gone and made a dog's breakfast of that edge so I'll just fix that up and let it scratch into the the first coat that we put on now here we go we're going to put more bits wherever right down from the water there we go look at that it's, a, it's just a big stone in the water okay so that's the color I just used I'll grab some more of this now we're going to go 25 percent leaving these dark pockets and now let it scratch okay so I'm, I'm kind of going in that motion uh, I want to try and keep this a bit more sanely around here a lot of oh, we've got a lot of light hitting here bring it down I'm still it's a might be a crooked umbrella shape but it's still that principle within my brush hitting the canvas and moving it across the canvas see I can even put some more in front of that because this is quite a big rock and then here a bit more of a highlight indicating more of little bits of edges there or whatever so here we go we just pretty much picked up some white and using just what's in our brush needing more white because if we try and add it into that it's going to take forever and a day and let's just I want it to be scratchy that's too solid there we go bits of scratchy that bit there that bit there that bit there there put that back there and a little bit up here let me have a look at that yeah that's a bit of a an abortion of a rock actually but you get the gist I like that one better now we've got to put the water around them now because this one's so close it's going to have some detail more than these ones so the main color 
that we use, which is say this one here, that's the blocking color, but this was a 75% color. Pick up this and get used to this principle if you like the way these rocks turn out. And what we want to do, and we tapes about there, we're going to lose it. We want to pretty much blur the bottom, but on a, watch. Blur it, bring it down into the water, blur it. Join it to the water though, don't leave a gap. From about here, blur it, follow the rock around, but join it where it's joining. That, But that line is where we'll put the water. I'm gonna have to leave the tape there to get a sense of it. And that's underwater there. But once we put the water around that, you're gonna see sense. Get yourself a flat brush, a good sharp one, and get some glaze. So we're getting some glaze, I'll pull it over here. And just a little bit of white, not too much. Look at this, I'm gonna wear it off the brush. Now, look at this glaze compared to that glaze. And I'm not using the craft paint here, I'm using the good quality titanium white out the tube, which is more opaque than the craft white. Okay, now, me brush, it's too full, I've got to wipe it clean. Chisel it on with some precision. Now, the water here, we'll start from here. Boom. This is instead of knife, big knife marks on your thing. Bang. Now, the edge of our rock, that's where the water's heading. But put some pizzazz into it. Get some lines across it like this, all the way like that, right out past the rock. So the line's about there, boom. So you're sinking that reflection down. And the water is coming from about here and it's hitting our rock coming in. Now if this is too translucent, we can always add a little bit more white. But around here, we've got the water hitting the edge of our rock now just around there, pull it out a bit, fade it out into the water, so here's, you need it, see here where it's hitting the rock, you want a nice tight edge there, something like that, and then we'll pull it out. Put some behind there so it doesn't look wrong. You can even sink some of those petal pebbles down like that. Now you can see I'm going to a little bit more white paint on there it's just not grunty enough. We've got water just rimming around. It's rimming around there. There we go. Now this one here we've pretty much got the water to the rock. We've got no shadow sinking down here. I mean you could have if it was felt close enough within your painting. And we can have some water behind as well, like I said. This is just an example. And get you can even get some just pure white paint if you want, and just have water, crispy, crispy water hitting some of that, even around here if you want to. But why I use the glaze, the glaze makes it transparent and you can see underneath the water surface and it puts a film there. Now see the perspective within this water surface. You can see just by putting the rocks in the, white, in the right shape, it's given the water that perspective which, which it needs. Yeah trying to paint some water there. Our water looks like it's going out there, okay? Because we've done the rocks the way your eyes look at them. Now, just to finish it off, let's say it's a big cliff rock. We'll put something over the edge here. I'm gonna go for me burnt umber just to block it in. Just a simple burn number, so I'll probably bring it about there. So it's gonna be in between this rock and that rock for the bottom face of it. Don't worry about how the top's gonna look, it's for the bottom bit where it meets the water. So let's just say it's a big 
cliff rock. I'll just put it there. And how do we want it? Like probably a cliff rock like they have in um, Thailand. I want to do bits of it jutting out just like so. Boom. That'll do. And it's whatever up there. Now, get, the, I'll get this a bit better than what it is there. Break it up. Now it's in the water. We want to sort of bring it around, but it can have another lower bit like that if you want. And it's coming around to about that degree. We'll paint this in. So I'll pull that back like a gentleman. But see how I've done the base? Coming around. I've dried that. I'm picking up some black on my brush. I haven't even washed it. And I want to create front and forward bits. And obviously on the top, let's say the top here, let's get the top nice and dark. Because on the top, I'll have a bit of green matter, okay? Just a simple bit of green matter so you'll get the gist of what the guru is doing. See here, I want to put that. I've made this a ridge. We can have some of this behind everything and we can have some kind of darker bits coming up just scratch them in any old way uh, I'll get a bit of darkness around the base just the base there we go just the base and I might put in some other shadowy cascady bits there dry that because it's a big rock I can use the same brush uh, so I'll get my paint over here so it was the burnt umber now I'm going to use titanium white and we'll get some of this. Now it doesn't have to be fully mixed. See how that's marbly? That creates good rock surface. And that black I'll put on there, I want to leave it, but I want to kind of create, let's just say, a nice crisp edge coming back into the rock there. It's, I don't know what kind of rock it is, but it's... And it's scooting up, it's got scallops of bits and pieces in it. Back here where we, I want to get that push back, some dark bits there, where all your dark bits are, come into the light bits, get some of it scooting up from there. From that bottom again, I'll, I don't know, try and get some kind of behaviour here. Can have slithers, you know, some, you know how rocks have like bands and ribbons and slithers in, in them and all sorts of stuff like that. Well, I'll want some of that growth, I probably want a bit of, but I want it scratchier than that. There we go. And doing big rocks like this, you might get carried away like I'm doing here now, doing brush strokes, but you can always grab the darker colour and replace them. Now, with that done, highlight that. So without washing the brush, we're getting more white into that paint, and we're going to simply highlight that, but just less now, 25% down to 5%. So we can probably have some light just hitting. See there, bugger all, isn't it? Wherever the light's coming from, you'll have to work it out. This one's just all over the place. The light's coming from straight up above by the look of the day sky. Can have some of this probably been hit. Here we go. And now I'll just put some foliage on that. So the best for the foliage, I'll just map in, I'll get a little bit of yellow just to get that green lights on because it's very translucent. I want to try and make it a bit opaque. This is perylene green. It's pretty much like a black, but it ain't black. And this will put the depth for our green. Where some rocks have this behavior. So let's just across the top there and dribbling down the rock. I can see it, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I'm gonna show you just with this stuff and dribble some of this down. Not that I want it, but just as an example, we might put a bit just growing out here on its own, just growing down there, up the wall there. See, boom. We'll give that a dry and we're gonna subtly highlight that. So to highlight that perylene green, just grab some of the cadmium yellow. It's cadmium yellow medium to be exact. And there's our green color. And a little bit more, because I probably really want to highlight everything now that I put on there about 
I have given all that green a dry and just on the tops, leaving a lot of that dark in there, the very top, the very top. So I'm kind of doing it like some ground cover coming over the edge, but leaving black between this and the green that I'm putting on. Come from here. All right, and that bit that I put in the middle, we want to subtly, it's just something, you know how sometimes rocks have growth growing out of them? Now just to finish it, pretty much whatever's in your brush of this middle color, just pull the yellow now and just mix that on its own like this, okay? Now you will need to get a bit of water on your brush to get it inky. So here we go again on the very tops, but only a less percentage of this now. And this gives you, sometimes it can give a painting a bit of a, a 3D look, which is great when you get that aspect going within your work. Okay, little bits here, little bits there, bit there coming down there. And okay. Okay, I'll just finish it off, get a bit more brighter stuff there so I could see it. Okay. All right, I'm just grabbing some of the white and the um, glaze again because if our rock like that last big one I've just done is in the water, you need to at least have water moving at the bottom of it, there and here. Can I get it level? And I can come up the stick different and keep these brush strokes nice and straight. Get rid of the blobby bits. Different bits and pieces there. Just before I wrap it up, I, I just was looking and I feel it is a bit important. Let's say this rock here, it might pay, you can have a bit of a shadow there. So let's put that shadow in, which is the, the burr number that I use with a little bit of the white. You wanna join it to the bottom of the rock. You would do this, I just noticed it now, so sorry I didn't do it before. You would do this before you add the glazed water and you can put a little bit wipe some of that off it's too much a little bit of a um, darker not too much in the water but keep it up and down with the structure up and down with the structure there I'll grab a little bit more come from here I'll, I will get the glaze and put it back on and we're just going to marry that to the bottom line of that rock there okay and just let that fade away to nothing because it's not a clear reflection but you'll get an idea of just how easy something like this is to do pretty much there get that back there and about there wipe a lot of that off just so it can be blurry Okay. Yeah, I should have done this before I added the water surface, but you'll get a gesso. And that dark value coming down there makes sense within the reflection. Okay. Okay, just grabbing the glaze again with some white in there. Creating the film, boom. And just sinking that all the way in the water now, like so. Here and there, like that. See how the bullshit stick gives you bullshittingly straight lines. It's fantastic in that you can get the, a bit more white and really come around the base here and there just to make bits of water really splashing, agitating or whatever. All right, we can even whack a frame on that and see how it looks. That doesn't look too bad in a frame either, does it? But you get an idea how the rocks are looking from close up. You see more of the tops and the further they get away, you start to see them 
on their side like out here okay and that is giving the water the look from where you're standing your eye sights at the horizon it's giving it the look where it's going out there okay that's something I know you can do well that was quite interesting something you can learn about your rocks keeping them the closer they are you can see more of the tops the further they're away you only see the side and it's giving your paintings perspective okay now be sure to share like and subscribe if it's your first time here and if you like what i'm doing tell your friends but if you don't like what i'm doing on my youtube channel you tell everybody all right goodbye good luck and good on you